I want to show an example of how to pass a string 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 with two different grammars. The grammar on the left, the red grammar, has just a rule for addition, multiplication and integers. So we're just saying our arithmetic expressions are either um, a sum or a product or a number. On the right hand side, the green grammar it's a variation which is more complicated because it introduces different levels in order to model precedence. So, as you can see, the three first lines look very similar, x, x1 and x2. But as we're separating into different levels, also we need two separate rules now to coerce an x into an x1 and to coerce an x1 into an x2. So as you will see, the difference between the two grammars is that the left hand is grammar, the right grammar is obviously simpler, but it allows you many different ways of passing the same string. Whereas the grammar on the right hand side has a unique pass tree for any string. So let's illustrate this um, with a string 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. So how many pass trees are there if we use the red grammar? So, what we can do here is um, we can use the rule, the red rule, the first rule on top in order, no, the second rule, sorry, we need a multiplication here, in order to produce any of these three multiplication signs. So let's say we use the rule to produce this multiplication sign, to multiply 1 and 2. So you want to count the number of possibilities, the number of pass trees that there are. So now the question is like, the next rule that produces a multiplication, which multiplication should this be? And we have two possibilities here. We can do like this. Or, alternatively, we can also first multiply 3 and 4. And then multiply the result. So there are two different pass trees already. And uh, I want to put them here to remember them. Because I want to count them. So this is one of them, and the other one looks like this. And I also want to write these past trees in a linear form. So to emphasize that passing is really all about putting parentheses in the right place. So These two trees correspond to two different ways of putting the parentheses into one times two times three times four. Okay, so what are the other possibilities? We explored all possible ways of passing one times two first. So what if we pass two times three first? Right, so then we can the second multiplication can multiply the result of 2 times 3 with 1. And then we keep times 4 for the end. Or alternatively, I can also first multiply with 4 and then with 1. So let me put down these two trees as well. So we have, in both cases, we do the middle first and then we do times 1 and times 4. And in parenthesized form, this is 2 times 3 first and then times 1 and then times 4. Or again, I can do 2 times 3 and then I do times 4 and only then times 1. 
So this is in parenthesized form. This is 2 times 3. And now the 4 first. And then the 1 times. Okay, so what do we have left? So these are all the possible ways I can do 2 times 3 first. Right? Because then I need to do either the 1 or the 4, and we explore these two possibilities. So what remains to look at is what happens if you do 3 times 4 first. And again, I have two possible choices. I can do 1 times 2, and then do the multiply the result with what I get from 3 times 4. But we see here that this is a tree that we already have here. So we don't count this tree again, which means that there is really um, only one more possibility. And I put this down here. So we have 3, 4 first, and then times 2, and then times 1. And also, let me write this in linearized form. So we do 3 times 4 and then times 2, and then times 1. So I have five different past trees. And of course, we know that the result of a multiplication will not depend on which of the trees we choose. But remember that a parser doesn't know the meaning of the expressions. So the parser doesn't know anything about what multiplication is. And so there are situations in programming languages where um, these different parse trees would give you different results, just for other operations than just multiplication. Or maybe even if multiplication, if you have some uh, side effects in the in the arithmetic expressions, like changing memory, for example. So this is one reason why it's interesting to have only one pass tree. The meaning of the expression can depend on that. Um, another is also efficiency. We don't want to have to make too many guesses of how to um, how to find pass trees. We want an efficient deterministic procedure. So let's see what happens in the case for the green grammar, which restricts the ways, the possible trees I can get. Okay, so let me start at the top here. I have an expression and Obviously, I have only multiplication signs in my string, so the only way to pass the string is to go to x1 here. Right? Because this, I need to apply the rule for multiplication, and the rule for multiplication is this one here. So I need an x1. OK, and then, as we said, we need to produce a multiplication sign. So let's do apply the rule for multiplication. I like to write it like this, x1. OK, so the question now is, which of these multiplication signs do I get here? Is it this one, or this one, or this one? With the red grammar, it could be any of the three. That's how we counted the five possibilities. But now if you look at the grammar, you just use a different color here. We have an x2 here. And if you look at the grammar, the x2 can only go to an integer. We cannot get another multiplication symbol from x2. So what this tells us is that um, it's really the only way we can line up this multiplication symbol with a string, the only way to match them is that this multiplication sign up here must be the one, the right one. 
the rightmost one. So what that means is that the only way to proceed here is to turn this into an integer and to turn the integer into a 4. And um, this multiplication sign, which we produced here, must be actually this one. And then what you see is that the same argument repeats itself. Right, so this will go here, and this will go here, and then we have another branching here, and this will go here, and this will go here, and this will go here. So if you use a different color to kind of draw out the shape of this tree, maybe I use a darker blue here, we see that um, we get this tree here. So let me draw this shape here. And then maybe switch back to the green color and circle this one here. So among the five red trees, it's only the one circled green, which is um, allowed by the green grammar. So just to summarize what we learned is that in the um, green grammar, the parentheses are always the ones to the left. So we have 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. That's the only way to put the parentheses if I use the green grammar. And uh, we also say this by saying that multiplication is left associative. So that's a technical term that you may encounter in some other cases. So it means that the parentheses go to the left. Thanks for watching.